We're killing a lot of them, and we're going to keep killing more of them. But we cannot win this war by killing them. We cannot kill our way out of this war. We need, in the longer term, medium and longer term, to go after the root causes that leads people to join these groups, whether it's lack of opportunity for jobs. Well, this week, the State Department's Marie Harf seems to, just suggest, to suggest the key to ending ISIS beheadings, burnings, and mass murders is to create more jobs in the Middle East. And then she doubles down. Watch. If we look around the world and say, longer term, we cannot kill every terrorist around the world, nor should we try. How do you get at the root causes of this? It, look, it, it might be too nuanced an argument for some, uh, like I've seen over the past 24 hours, some of the commentary out there, but it's really the smart way. Former State Department official Christian Whiten joins me now. Are we just too dumb to understand what Marie Harf is saying? We're not nuanced enough to understand the threat from ISIS, even though we're seeing these videos and seeing their march across the Middle East. What's the, what's the deal here? You know, I think you could take a little lip from these people if they had a better track record. I mean, you can be Babe Ruth and point at the bleachers if you're going to hit a home run. But if you look at the world, it's on fire. It's actually fair to say if ISIS, if Al-Qaeda is the tip of the spear, what's the rest of the spear? But this administration is unable to do that by being unable to say the words radical Islam or Islamist or jihadist by failing to trace back to the root cause, the political cause, they're really just lost at sea. Well, you've talked about how this statement by Marie Harf is not a gaffe. Explain that. How is it not just a gaffe coming from a spokeswoman at the State Department? Well, it's, it's, it wasn't just an offhand comment. It's something the president, to use his favorite term, doubled down on afterward. Um, and it's somewhat ludicrous. I mean, just look at the look around the world. Look at, say, Africa. Um, you have poverty that's uh, pervasive. You have corruption that's pervasive. Where are people kidnapping schoolgirls to enslave them? Where are people putting suicide vests on and blowing themselves up? It's the Muslim places. It's mm -hmm. places where you have radical Islam or the Islamist political ideology. Another example, look at the Philippines. Very corrupt, very poor. Where is the terrorism? Well, it's, it's in the south, in the Muslim areas, in Mindanao, and it's laced with this ideology. Well, the administration seems to do a lot of talking about what they're going to do. And we've also heard them say that they want to get to the root of extremism and this problem. But do you really think that's an honest statement considering they aren't really talking about what the threat really is? Right, no, it's, it's profoundly dishonest, I think. And if you look, I would argue the rest of the spear, if the tip is ISIS, the rest is our Islamists, political Islamists, the Muslim Brotherhood. But Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama were the ones who really paved the way for the Muslim Brotherhood to take power in Egypt, thankfully since deposed. They're the ones, and it was Jen Psaki, Marie Hoff's, uh, Harf's boss, former boss of the State Department, mm -hmm. who lied, said that uh, Georgetown University had invited the Muslim Brotherhood to a confab that involves senior U.S. diplomats. In fact, the State Department did that. So they are still in bed with groups that our allies around the world now recognize are part of the problem. Well, we now know that Jen Psaki is getting a promotion to the White She's going back to the White House and she's going to head up their communications team over there. What kind of message does that not only send the country, but also the world when you have the history of what she's talked about, what she's done, and quite frankly, she's had a lot of gaffes, just like Marie Harf. I guess they aren't gaffes, but statements just like Marie Harf. And now she's going to be in charge of the White House messaging. Right. Well, it's it's interesting because it's technically a promotion, but it takes her off camera. And so most people around the world are, are now going to see other people. Marie Harf is still going to be at the State Department. So Saki, in a sense, has been you know kicked upstairs and off camera. But, you know, a big problem in this administration is that the spokesmen are becoming the news. If you look at the um, uh, Marlon Fitzwater spokesman in, in Reagan and held into Bush, he once called Mikhail Gorbachev a drugstore cowboy, made himself the story and <laughs> offered to resign because he did that. This is yeah. not what spokesmen are supposed to do. But do you think... What what kind of message is it sending our allies as well when we have people at the State Department, people running the White House communications team, who seem to not really want to, want to get to the root of the problem when they're talking about things like getting ISIS fighters jobs, when we've seen that a lot of these people come from very affluent backgrounds and have plenty of money and they come from high employment areas. Right. I think for our allies around the world, they see, once again, this is an administration that can't change, that still thinks that um, basically they need to apologize for America, uh, to reach out their hand to countries like Iran, um, in a sense to betray allies. You know, you have uh, the UAE's ambassador, Ambassador Otaiba, saying that, uh, you know, talking about radical Islam, saying that they have a different vision for the future. They have a story about the past that is false and a vision for the future that will never happen. So, you know, we talk about getting our allies to the right place in the Middle East. They're already there in many respects. It's, mm -hmm. it's we who need to make some progress. Well, we can joke uh, as much as we want about the statements that Marie Harps makes, but I think that it has very serious consequences uh, in the fight against ISIS. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you.
And coming up, Judge Janine's exclusive interview with one of England's leading politicians on the ISIS threat. And I get a reaction from the Muslim community to this week's Countering Violent Extremism Conference. Stay close.